สวัสดีครับผมบิ๊กบุญและคุณกําลังฟังคำนี้ดีพอดแคสต์สะสมศัพท์การวลนิดภาษาอังกฤษแข็งแรง Hey what's up you guys welcome to another episode of Comedy Podcast which is supposed to be a bilingual or almost full English version mm. right Nung Ji hi yes of course joining us today of course as usual Nung Ji and today Nung Ji we have a very special guest right yes mm-hmm. what do you know about this guest well I know him from the Standard Morning Wealth uh-huh. and also another podcast right. Which we are going to talk, talk about, about eventually. A little bit, mm-hmm. not a little bit, maybe a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, welcome, Pivit. สวัสดีครับ Well, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me here. Of course. Joining your program today. Mm-hmm. Hi. How are you? Very well. Actually, I'm... you got better, right, from your vocal cord condition. Um, I mean, last week I suffered really a lot, mm-hmm. right, from my um vocal. I don't know. I mean. Oral infection, but finally I'm fully recovered from that. Yeah, well, it must be very frustrating, especially for us who use the voice to work. I mean, for right? me, voice is like fit for football players. <laughs> yeah, without voice, I can't perform my duty. I can't work, and I can't live my life properly. Mm-hmm. So, any tips of taking care of your voice? Um, important thing is that I need to rest a lot. All right. At my age, um, sometimes the um, Unavailability of time seems to be big problems because right. every day I am demanded by many sides in order to perform several duties. Right. Mm-hmm. But finally, I survive. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm here together with all of you as well as the um, audiences at home. It's such an honor. Thank you so much for dropping by. And um, actually, we cross paths all the time because we work at the same company. Mm-hmm. But we have never had an opportunity to actually sit down and talk. So today would be that great opportunity, so we can get to know you better. ในฐานะของรุ่นพี่คนหนึ่งนะครับที่ทำงานอยู่ในบริษัทเดียวกันหลายคนรู้จักดรวิทหรือว่าพิวิทหรือเฮียวิทของพวกเราทำไม why เฮียวิท actually Actually, um, I would prefer to call myself Wit, okay. or friends of mine would call me a Wit. Okay. But finally, when I reached the age of approximately 38 or 39, okay. when I went to a restaurant, waiter called me, "Here, Wit, here, Wit, let's come here to join table 11." Mm-hmm. And I look at myself, "Am I that old?" It sounds old. But finally, when I went to other restaurants at the same time frame, they called me, "Here, here, let's go to table number two." Well, I asked my wife, um, "Do I look that old to be called here, or brother, or actually here in Thai would mean people at the age of over 40? <laughs> Finally, my wife said, um, "Wait, you need to um, accept the reality <laughs> that you are getting old." <laughs> so, I mean, when I reached 40, I found that here is not an offensive word any longer. Mm-hmm. I had to accept. The truth and the reality that I don't look young any longer, <laughs> but I would prefer to be a um, respectful aged person rather than try to pretend to be a young citizen. Mm-hmm. Actually, I think he has a, there's a term of respect, yeah. and it it kind of implies that we are close. We we know each other pretty well. Yes. So, yes. for a person to call the other person here mm. is 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 not just an acquaintance. We we yeah. we we gotta know. Each other at at some level, some right? Level, yeah. Uh huh. And I mean, important thing is that there are many people who share the same name as me. Mm-hmm. Which, in order to differentiate myself <laughs> from other people, I would call myself here with. Yeah. Here with is unique. <laughs> yeah, very, very. กลายเป็นบอกว่าแบบเทรดมาร์กไปแล้วนะครับครับ It it has to be like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So um. n o n g i before um the the standard morning wealth. Mm-hmm. How, how do you How do you perceive here with like well, a person from the television? I think I saw you as a news anchor. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, right? You you were like a news anchor, but been pull prakat khao. Yes, for, for 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 sometimes before I joined the Standard Wealth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, how, how did you get started? Like the whole the whole TV thing. Um, Has it always been your dream to work in front of a camera? Unfortunately, for television? never. Really? That mm. has never been my dream before. Mm-hmm. I mean, I graduated in one of the um, worst time for Thailand. That means after the economic collapse in 1997, right. oh. I came back to Thailand in the year 1999. And by that time, when I came here to Thailand, first thing I need to find a job. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Imagine many company closed down. Mm-hmm. Many of the company were taken over by foreigners. I mean, after the economy collapsed, yeah. and I um, have a lot of difficulty finding a job. Especially if you look at my degree, I study political science. Ooh. I mean, not many people would think political scientists can do anything for their organization, mm-hmm. and therefore I think the best way is that I try to send as many CVs and applications as possible to several corporates. Mm-hmm. I mean, corporates was by that time my dream to join, mm-hmm. yeah? and I submitted around 70 applications as well as copies Whoa. of CD, CVs to different companies. Mm-hmm. And finally, there were only three companies calling me for an interview. Mm. The first one is a Taiwanese computer manufacturer. And they said, well, it's nice to have you in our interview, but unfortunately, you seem to be overqualified. Oh, so man. that's the disadvantage of a PhD holder. Mm. Right? <laughs> uh, we don't look that we can work practically. Mm. The second company is one of the um, car manufacturer. Finally, they said, With, unfortunately, you look too young and you don't have any kind of um, occupational experience. Mm-hmm. So finally, I pin my hope to the last source, which is um, a news agency which is called The Nation. Mm-hmm. The Nation, by that time, they plan to expand their business to broadcasting and they open a new channel called Nation News Channel. Mm-hmm. And that was the last hope that I had. And I joined that company, I mean, gratefully. I didn't know what was News Anchor. Mm -hmm. I um, know partly about news business Mm -hmm. because when I was in the UK in the last years, when I studied my um, master's and doctoral degree, I worked part-time as a sports journalist responsible mainly for Italian football. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, that, that sounds a little bit um, strange that I follow Italian football more than um, English football, but i tell you that later on. Mm-hmm. And therefore, I joined um, the Nation Channel and I asked, what kind of position would you like me to do? And they said, Which, you seem to have an ability to be news anchor. Mm. Fine. I, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Did, did they um, uh, qualify me by that time? But I said, well, let's start. And I start working as a news anchor in television accidentally. Mm. But I mean, my attitude by that time, I would have to think if destiny picked me into that spot, I need to perform my best. Mm -hmm. And I try to learn. Despite very low salary in comparison to to my expectation, Mm -hmm. but I work there willingly with my 100% effort. And a sister of mine, who has always been my, my coach, she said, well, with, you just imagine that you are studying another master's degree in broadcasting mm-hmm. with free of tuition fee, with you getting paid, so you should be happy about it. Then I end up in a television industry without me having planned for that before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so was it hard or was it easy for you? I mean, for me, I found it very fun. Yeah? I mean, in the past, to be appeared on television is the prestige. Even though um, not many people would know that we um, didn't enjoy a lot of salary. Mm -hmm. We only have adequate amount of money each month. But I think, well, if I have a chance, I learn it. Mm. And I thought that that was one of my stepping stones that I would move forward. I don't know where will I end up, but I simply think that I try to do the best over there at the Nation Channel. And then I hope to find new opportunity in the future. Mm -hmm. But finally, after eight months working there, I fell in love with that occupation. Mm -hmm. I think even though I'm not a good um, news anchor, but I enjoy the work and I try to learn more. And I never thought of leaving that job anywhere in time in the future. But there was something happened by that time, so I had to switch my career to mm. something else. Mm-hmm. So, like, what did you do after being a news anchor? I mean, um, one of the my, my one of my um, key assignment there was to interview the top management of multinational companies, mm-hmm. and I interviewed several CEOs of multinational companies. The reason was that in the year 1997, 1999, 2000, there were many investors. I mean, from other parts of the world coming here and establish their business. So I interview them in business themes. And the president of one of the um, German manufacturers, car manufacturer, BMW, Mm -hmm. 
looked at me and said, "Which you seems to fit with our company." I looked at him. Well, I really wish to join your company, sir, because I want to drive your car, <laughs> but um, I don't think I'm a right person. So, I simply talked to him and thank you him for his positive comments that he had to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah? So, believe it or not, after a couple of weeks, his secretary called me and said, "With um, Mr. Cordoba, my ex boss, he's Spanish, who worked for a German company." Which will have a private dinner with you, discussing a serious matter. Mm-hmm. I imagine. Well, it could be that he want to hire me for a manager position. I went there, sat together with him, and he was a direct person. You know, the Spanish are not. You know, uh, they they are no nonsense nationalities. They're, really They're very straightforward. I sat at the table, and he said, "Before we get anything to eat, I want you to join my company." Wow. Okay, and I said, "Well, I was well aware of that, mm-hmm. and I want to say no to you." Really? He was a little bit surprised, mm-hmm. and he asked me, "Well, this is quite strange, because a company like ours, BMW, is one of the most attractive and the most appealing company for newly graduated mm-hmm. and for new generation, because we are a futuristic company. Why do you refuse that so easily?" I said, "Simply because I fall in love with." The job as a news anchor mm-hmm. at my beloved workplace, Nation Channel. He tried to convince me for quite a while, but by that time, I simply have my mindset totally shut down, mm-hmm. and I simply refuse. And I ask him one key questions. Excuse me, can I ask me one of the key questions? What kind of salary will I have? <laughs> I mean, normally I'm 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 not a rich person. <laughs> I need to ask the figures from him. Even though I tried to refuse, but finally the um, figures that he revealed to me was something that I think um, irresistible. <laughs> It is around seven times more than the salary that I've got at the nation. Mm-hmm. Well, so what did I do? I said to him, um, "Can I go to a loo for a while?" <laughs> and he said, "Of course. Let's spend your time thinking about it." I went to the loo. And I make a phone call to my sister, who worked for a multinational company as well, and she said, "If you don't accept this opportunity, you are dumb." <laughs> as simple as that. And I go out. And I said, "Hey, I make decision to your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be considered. Mm-hmm. I will consider your proposal." Mm-hmm. And my boss, Mr. Cordoba, I mean later on my boss, good boy. With tomorrow, you contact my secretary, and then you book a ticket to Munich. Because you have to be interviewed by top management over there in Munich for this particular position. Wow! And then you pack your luggage, and then we go to Munich together. Wow! That sounds like a dream. Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean just to cut it short, actually the um, opportunity that I met top management from BMW by that time was not the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, before I left United Kingdom after my graduation, I had an interview. With BMW in Europe before, oh. by that time they wished to. Um, Hunt newly graduates from Asia to work in their subsidiaries in the region mm-hmm. in Asia, but by that time there were some administrative problems that they can't accept the short list that they pick up, ten mm-hmm. out of three thousand. Finally, I didn't have any job by that time, but the world seems to be too small. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I joined BMW again. I mean, mm-hmm. in the course for job, I went to Munich, and um, Mr. Cordoba told me. Which I will be in Thailand for another two months, and then I will leave Thailand, and my successor will take over. And ask him, who is your successor? My successor is called Karsten Engel, a German name. Well, this name sounds very familiar to me, but I'm not sure. I went to see Mr. Engel. I opened the door. He looked at me, and he said to me, "It's you again." Oh, and I said, "It's you again. The world <laughs> is small." Super small. He was the person who interviewed me in London before wow. my graduation. Wow. wow! Finally, we met again. It, uh-huh. it was destiny. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm destined to work in that company. Mm-hmm. So finally, I end up with a BMW, and I worked over there for seven years, mm-hmm. and then I mean, 
after the change of different administrations, I moved out from car industry to banking industry to Sime Commercial Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, and I worked over there for a year, and then I left Sime Commercial Bank. And I rejoined television industry once again in the year 2008. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So did you miss being in front of a camera during your time with BMW and um, the bank? What? What I found over eight years in corporate life, corporate life is um, is really worthwhile being in there. Mm-hmm. Right. What I have to say is that a lot of characters that I have today. And a lot of mindset, if they are professional enough, have been characterized by corporate culture, mm-hmm. especially in BMW. Mm-hmm. Yeah? As you might know, corporate life itself is very systematic, very structural. And in addition, the German elements in the company All right. really enrich my professionalism. Mm-hmm. And if I'm not wrong, perfectionism. Mm-hmm. And to be a strategic thinker and know how to treat people around me systematically, appropriately, and to be international. Mm-hmm. But of course, in international companies, there might be some change in administrations. Sometimes you might enjoy, sometimes you might suffer. I mean, this is what you, especially audiences in the future, might face because life is not always progressive. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can suffer, sometimes you enjoy. But corporate lives in both organizations taught me really a lot. But finally, I think, well, those are not worlds that I enjoy. Corporate life, I have to say to you, despite you might um, enjoy a bigger amount of salary, but you are pressured every day, mm-hmm. every second. That's the way you are characterized to be a mature person. It turns me from a young boy into, into a man. Mm. Not an old man, but a man. Yeah? <laughs> so, but, but I mean, I do appreciate that. But finally, I think I have to move on to do something else. I didn't think about returning to television industry again, mm-hmm. but I met my ex-boss at The Nation accidentally again. Mm-hmm. And he said, well, since you left um, corporate life, um, will you rejoin us as a part-timers? I said, why not? Yeah. After I left corporate life, I moved to join um, a PR agency for a while. And parallelly, I worked as a part-timer in Nation Channel for some of the um, programs that they have in their mm-hmm. channels. Wow. So how, how was it different from the first time you worked at TV? Oh, thank you very much for asking. That is a very intelligent question. <laughs> thank um, you. When I reported new for the first time as a news anchor, I mean, in the year 2000, I start in July 2000, I was immature. Yeah? I simply read news and present it right in front with no confidence mm-hmm. and sometimes without knowing sensitivity of people who consume news. Mm-hmm. Those who are sources. By that time, we have paper, we have script, we read, we try to understand it, but we might not know the unwritten message or the unseen impact that it might influence other people. Mm-hmm. It might hurt people. It might destabilize morality of people. It could inspire people. This is what I would think that news business is not only what you see, not written letters, not spoken words, but sometimes they are unseen feeling. They are unseen inspiration. They are unseen messages that you need to feel and sense with your maturity. Mm. This is what I found. I, I don't know whether I summarized that correctly, but this is what I learned. And this is my um, answer to your question. So it sounds like you found that it's a lot deeper and more complicated, has so many levels that you can just like use as a tool to get to people. I, I, I do like your questions because for me, um, information is what people would expect from news. But in fact, in my life, I would find that there are different levels of intelligence. Knowledge, just one thing. Intelligence is a higher level. But the highest level is called wisdom. Mm. Wisdom is not 
purely information. It is not just intelligence. Wisdom comprehends or include also the feelings of other people, the um, emotions of people who consume news, and ability in order to control message or ability to communicate message in a smart way. Especially if I combine together with um, Buddhist mindset. When I report news, when I when I grow older, apart from information, raw data, intelligence, I try to bring in some human elements in there, mm. just to ensure that those who consume news, apart from learning something, they have the um, systematic thinking. They have what they call mindfulness, or in Thai we call sati, mm-hmm. which is far superior than just information. Intelligence and knowledge. <laughs> wow! Wow! And look at you, 20 years after, you're back in an, another news channel again. Mm-hmm. But this time is the online mm. news, which is a standard. And you work right now as a host of mm. the Morning Wealth mm-hmm. Show, which is a, a part of a standard wealth. And how 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 has that been going for you? I mean, for me, I think this is new opportunity of my life. Yeah. I got the offer from the standard just right before my 50th birthday. Wow. <laughs> And imagine when I work for some other channels, I'm one of the youngest members <laughs> of the company. But when I move here, I'm one of the oldest <laughs> member of the company. I mean, this... I look at in a positive way because that's has, I mean since I experience the standards I always experience um positive aspects of my life, mm-hmm. and I think I'm empowered and I'm energized and I'm rejuvenated every day mm. by youngsters around me, uh-huh. yeah. like both of you. Yeah? <laughs> I'm in generation young generation X. Actually, I'm X too. Uh, you're X too. Yeah. yeah, generation X, Gen Y, Gen Z, and Alpha. I mean, all the generation and the synergy of all of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, based on their attitude, which is open-minded. I mean, they talk quite constructively here right. across generation, mm-hmm. and I found that this really empowers me into a new world. Wow! Well. It's really opened my eyes up to a new horizon that I would have never imagined before. Mm-hmm. For me, this is new opportunity, and I come here apart from to do my job. In order to learn how the world is moving, mm-hmm. how capable are the young young generation that I face day to day, and I have to say that I never lost hope in Thailand, especially when I joined the standards. We have great young generation mm-hmm. who think constructively. We have great human resources, and apart from the ability and inspiration that I absorb. The level of professionalism here is far higher than my expectation, so I'm in a happy land. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always compare this to myself. I'm very lucky. When I joined BMW, as you might know, BMW has been voted for decades as one of the most appealing corporates for young generation in each particular. Um, Time frame, mm-hmm. and now I work for one of the most appealing company here oh, yeah. in Thailand. Oh, yeah. Even though they are two and a half years old or three years old, they are in the list of one of the most attractive workplace that people want to join. And luckily, I joined them at the age of 50 <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, we're so we're so glad you. Yeah, it sounds so so nice. We we feel so fortunate to. I, I'm to telling you the truth. I'm too. not over exaggerating. <laughs> I mean, since I absorbed the culture of honesty from the German, uh-huh. I would have to say what I tell to all of you. I look straight into your in in into your eyeballs, and I'm telling you the truth <laughs> that I do appreciate this opportunity really a lot. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you're having fun. Really a lot every day for me. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy um, waking up. You know what time that I have to wake up every day for morning wealth? For like four, three, three four, four? three fifty. Oh Whoa. my god! Ten minutes before four. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wake up just before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And what time do you go to bed? At around um, twenty one thirty. Wow! And I, I think wow. that 
at my age, I sleep less than youngster, mm-hmm. and I sleep around six hours would be enough for me. Uh-huh. And I don't think this is liability in my life. Mm. Every day is new opportunity wow. and new enjoyment. Wow. That's so cool. So let's talk a little bit about your show, The Morning Wealth. Mm-hmm. So it sounds, uh, it it could sound a bit complicated, mm-hmm. and it sounds like it's well talking about money and investment. Mm-hmm. It it could sound a a bit hard to understand. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, watching your show each day, mm-hmm. it seems like you guys know how to like make things easier to understand. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's one of the goals. Yes, I mean, when you say this is difficult, and I have to say it doesn't seem difficult. It is difficult, <laughs> okay? but for me, it is necessary for every one of us. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let me share with you my experience. I mean, in relations to my opportunity to work in the morning wealth. Yeah, when I work for a car company, I have to say, like all the youngsters at the age of um, late twenties, early thirties. Imagine, I ask not only both of you, but I ask everyone who is listening um, to, to, to us here. If you earn a salary at the age of 29, once you get a salary on every 25th of every month, what will you do? Spend them all. <laughs> that was me. I <laughs> spent them all. <laughs> it's, it's quite normal. And I spend them all. Um, so... When I um, left BMW, I hardly had any kind of savings. You might ask people, well, you don't have a problem because you have a new workplace. Prestigious, prestigious workplace, SCB. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so my life moved progressively. I can enjoy my life to the max. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I went to SCB, I met people who have high intelligence in financial management. Okay. And they asked me, "What have you planned for your savings? What is saving? I only know spending. <laughs> okay, well, I I mean in terms of financial literacy, I have zero. Mm-hmm. Really, I don't know anything. No, because in car industry, we have to urge people to spend, mm-hmm. which I is see. quite normal. Huh? Like if we play in a football, we are like forward. Mm-hmm. But when we work for a bank, we need to be more prudent. Uh. Okay, and when I um." Organized a press conference on, for example, like um, um, savings, investment, <laughs> fund management, stocks. I don't understand any word of what they were they are mm-hmm. speaking. Who would have thought? No, I my, mean, uh, I was absolutely zero. Oh, God. Uh, absolutely zero, until I met one of the EVP executive um, vice president who, who was responsible for for asset management, mm-hmm. and he said, every one of us need to have our financial planning and to manage our wealth wisely in order to have a stability in your financial life. Okay? I ask him, well, sir, but I do not understand what is stability in financial life. He said to me, I will quantify that for you. For example, if each and every month, you need to have your um, expense for, for example, 100,000 baht per month. Let's say um, mortgage, installment for cars, and, and tuition fee for your children. If you need 100,000 baht per month. Stability means when you have saving of that amount times 24. Wow. That means 2.4 million. Only when you have that money in your bank account, that means 2.4 million, mm-hmm. you can claim that you have a stable financial life. I, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't have any saving in my bank. Mm-hmm. So is it important? Wait, everyone in the entire world need to face uncertainty in life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you work peacefully, but some days there might be some unexpected happen. You might lose your job. You might not be able to find your job in order to have your normal life for some times. But if you have that 24 months expense in your bank, at least, at least you are able to live your normal life even though you can't find any kind of additional salary for another two years. That is what we call stable financial status. 
So by that time, I just well aware. Well, I just know that. But that uncertainty will never happen to my life. Mm. Like every one of us, when we were young, we think our life trajectory, our life plan will be progressing positively, progressively, exponentially. This year I'm 25. I earn 100,000 b a h t s Next year I earn 1 million b a h t s Further on, I earn 2 million b a h t s a month. Is that possible? That's possible. But in life. The only certain thing in life is uncertainty, and this is how many years ago? That was in 2008. That's wow. me in 13 years ago. Right. Mm. That was a big reminder of my life that I need to have financial planning, mm. and I need to improve my financial literacy. I cannot say I will go on and work actively, and I will earn a lot of money without uncertainty interfering my life. That was not realistic in your life. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, one day I worked for a bank for a year, and I think, well, um, the bank has been so kind to me, but this is not my job. But I couldn't find yet further life. I left the bank with very minimal saving. Mm-hmm. I had some, because I um, I became aware when I attended that, that that interview. But I think, well, if I can turn the clock back. I would have had my financial planning and learn financial literacy long before I joined the bank. Mm. Mm. And today, I might have substantial amount of of saving. So, after I left the bank, I start being serious about following financial products, mm-hmm. in which once I thought that was totally irrelevant to my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I start um, investing in stocks. Okay, uh, lazily, I have to say, lazily, <laughs> because I didn't have um, enthusiasm in that. Mm-hmm. Luckily, my wife, I mean, life or wives, uh, they are financially cautious. Uh, she told me, "Wait, start opening an investment port." Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how to do it. The starting point is can motivate you to learn and to be able to grow your money. What does it mean growing my money? Uh, so finally, she forced me to p- open a port, yeah, with a CBS. I can't remember, and I opened a port, and she uh, kind of forced me to start investing. Mm-hmm. But imagine when you are in the real driving seat, passion comes. I comes well now. I wish no. When I invest certain amount for a stock, how will they move? Why do they move up? Why do they move down? So, I learned real a lot when I was in the driving seat, mm. and afterwards I tried to expand my knowledge about financial literacy. But of course, I mean, in my surrounding, I'm not forced to learn that in depth in details. But at least I open my eyes and my ears for something that I always turn a blind eye to and a deaf ears to. Mm-hmm. And finally, when I Accumulate this knowledge further and further. I think at least I have some stability in my financial life. And for many people who watch my program, they would think, "Well, with this is difficult. I know this is difficult." But in our life, when we were young, imagine when we were at primary school, when we had to to solve an equation, was that difficult? Yeah. Do you need to overcome it? Mm-hmm. You need to pass exams, mm-hmm. yeah? and when you grow up to secondary school, you learn trigonometry. Is it difficult? Very. Super. <laughs> it is very difficult, but you need to overcome it. You need to pass the exam. Mm-hmm. Yeah? When you grow even further, at the age of um, 16, 17, 18, or higher secondary school, what do you need to learn? Calculus, physics, vectors. Many things, and you find this is totally irrelevant to your life. But you need to learn it. Mm-hmm. Likewise, financial financial literacy is a prerequisite of your life mm-hmm. if you want to survive effectively, mm-hmm. if you want to live happily in this world. So I'm forced to, and I tell many people, spend times. You don't have to watch my program. 
but you need to equip yourself with financial knowledge, bit by bit. Just like when you attend a physics course or chemistry course, you might not excel that in two months, mm-hmm. but with your attention, with your um, strong determination, one day, real soon, you'll be able to understand it. If you understand it, it doesn't mean that you simply know them for the sake of knowing something, but you can grow your wealth. And finally, you can live happily because you have a strong financial foundation for your life. Mm-hmm. So, um, Nongji just told me about her like ex- um, like experiment or exploration into the investment world. Yes. So do you have, I'm sure you have a lot of questions for h e w i t right? Well, like for me, I'm like a beginner mm. in like the trading world. Mm. Okay, at first, um, h e w i t can you explain between like stock trading and investment? Do is you, it the do, same is, thing? Is it the mm. same thing or is it different? Stock trading is a subset mm-hmm. of the universe of investment. Mm-hmm. Universe of investment is huge. And vast, mm-hmm. yeah. It might include some other financial products as well. For example, government bond. Mm. Even when you <clears throat> invest in gold, and you buying some fund from a mutual fund or hedge fund, for example. Mm-hmm. So the universe of investments is vast, and investing in stocks. Either as a speculator or value investors, this is only a tiny atoms in the universe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is what I try to um, to, to to explain to you. Mm-hmm. But for me, I have to say that <clears throat> in my program Morning Wealth, I really like what you summarize. It seems that we try to simplify the terms that we communicate to our audience mm-hmm. or our viewers. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. The combination, apart from me myself. I'm very honored and I'm very pleasure. It's my pleasure to team up with k u n f e r n Sirataya. Mm-hmm. She is truly one of the best news anchor in this particular area. She is. She really knows what she is talking. She really draw from her experience and her insight and experience. I learn really a lot from her. And my role, I have to say that she's a leader for the program. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a learner. Who follow her, and I try. Should there be any kind of questions that I have, I would ask her, mm-hmm. or sometimes I would do my homework, and talk to her, and I try to digest some sophisticated um, technical terms into a common terms mm-hmm. where people could understand, and I try to represent audience or viewers who sit together in the world surrounded by highly technical people, mm-hmm. or High-profile experts in the program, just to ensure that our um, program, apart from communicating to experts, mm-hmm. those who have a deep insight, those who are insightful in financial markets, I also communicate to those who are beginners like me, like you, and those who might not have had an interest in investment mm-hmm. and savings to join to this world. Because this is not exclusive topic. Exclude, exclusive mean we exclude everyone out. Mm-hmm. If you don't understand, you're excluded. No, mm. we try to include every one of us mm. together. Yeah. Therefore, I would think that this program <clears throat> is a really ideal amalgamation of the right compositions. Mm-hmm. This is what I think. I don't know whether you agree with me, mm-hmm. but I try to do my best, and I'm sure that the team will try to deliver just what we plan to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So, for beginners, what do you think is the most important thing to know, or to aware, or to equip yourself with, uh, if you want to Start be serious mm-hmm. in investing? Um, if you ask me, what is my um, approach? I would say that different investors, they have different mentalities. They can um, bear different level of risks. Uh, so it is quite difficult to answer the questions. What will be the first steps? But mm-hmm. for me, I'm a person of um, Nike type. Just do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I normally, when I, whenever I do things, I try to prepare and try to make um, myself. Underst- I, I try to understand the real topic. What is it all about? Uh-huh. What are key mechanisms? Okay. What are key factors that I have to monitor? 
and afterwards I would put myself in the driving seat. I think I tell you this all the time. If you know everything, but you never go to the battlefield, mm. you will never feel the smell of blood, mm-hmm. the sense of injury, the suffer of war, the taste of victory. So better, I do that, and my approach is gradual, step by step. Mm. We don't have to invest, let's say, 100 of our savings in the first test. Mm-hmm. You might invest very minimal amount, just to get the touch and feels of that mm-hmm. in every territory. Right. In investing stocks, in government bond, mm-hmm. in gold, in cryptocurrency. Mm. Which is very trending right now. Oh well, but finally, to put yourself in the driving seat, mm-hmm. as I say, if you. I mean, I'm a big fan of history, so mm-hmm. I always compare these things to battlefield in the history. If you are a um, great strategic thinker, mm-hmm. but ne- you never enter into the battlefield, you never hold assaults by yourself, you never go on and hear the artillery being shot. <laughs> How will you feel the real sense of battlefield? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is myself, but some other people might think. Well, you need to prepare a solid foundation. You need to develop your understanding until you are sure, mm-hmm. until you are prudent, and then you go on and invest. But for me myself, <clears throat> work step by step, get the taste of investment, and you will feel something, and you will learn your mentality. Because in the same battlefield, different people have got different met- mentalities, mm. different wavelength of thinking, mm. different level of risk taking mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, put yourself on the driving seat. Mm. Once you have a questions, you ask those whom you think they are good coach, mm-hmm. right. and then you learn and invest together at the same time, and have a reciprocal experience. Right. Action, learning. After you have learned it, you act again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and react from what you have done wrong, mm-hmm. and you'll become wiser. I use wiser, not more or not cleverer or more intelligent, because investing apart from your insight, apart from information, data, and knowledge, mentality matters. Mm-hmm. I said mentality is the um, foundation of everything. Mm-hmm. Some of you. Might be a very good strategist, but finally, you make decision in the wrong moment <laughs> because you can't resist some of your emotions. For example, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Wow. You, you have said before that you used to be a lazy mm-hmm. investor. So ha- has that changed uh, dramatically? How, how are you as a <laughs> dramatically? Yeah? Dramatically. So I so mean, you're more aggressive now in investing. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before you go on and invest in um, in several f- um, financial products, mm-hmm. let's say in um, in in a buying fund, for example, they will ask you to estimate your ability for risk taking every year. Mm-hmm. You know, I end up with the highest score every time. <laughs> I'm a risk taker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't expect high return if I don't risk. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying this is a good mentality to right. to um, to mm-hmm. imitate. I'm not saying this is good. But it's yeah. who you are. But mm-hmm. but this is right. this is me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I I'm able to absorb those risk. Right. Yeah. So this is the way that I am. And but anyway, aggressions <laughs> combined with good preparation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Combining with your mindfulness or sati in Thai. If you are going too aggressive, you calm yourself down. If you are too gentle, you increase some of the aggression in. Mm-hmm. You need to um, find the right balance in different moments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But finally, I'm sure that those who listen to this program, including both of you, one day you will have huge amount of wealth. Prepare them now. Once you have huge amount of wealth, sheer amount of wealth. You will end up like a winner. Mm-hmm. Whoa! <laughs> well, just like Pibik has told me before, like start investing now. Like the only thing you wanted to tell yourself back in the days is to start yeah. investing. Mm-hmm. I wish it started sooner. Yeah, I mean, please do. 
Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Just yeah. do it. Yeah. That's the thing. We yeah. don't have to invest. For example, people who start investing in stocks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, can I invest um, hundreds, thousands? There is no regulation staying the minimal, mm-hmm. so you are able to identify the appropriate size of investment you want to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, it's been fun. Actually, Very we can fun. keep talking about this all day, mm-hmm. but um, unfortunately, our time has run out. But p e e t will come back for another episode, and we'll yes. be talking about different stuff now mm-hmm. because you just said you're into history also, yeah. and that <laughs> will be one of the new shows mm-hmm. of our standard podcast, yes. hosted by p e e t again. So is it'll be your first podcast, right? That will be my first because I'm I was born analog, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. so podcast is for me is a very new thing, right. but I do enjoy this new world enormously. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so we'll talk about that mm-hmm. in the, in next, the next episode. episode. So thank you so much for joining us for this episode. And uh, if you want more about um, the uh, financial literacy, mm-hmm. you can go and watch the Standard Morning Wealth like every morning, right at. At seven to eight, seven okay. to eight, Monday every to Monday morning. to Friday every morning. Yeah. The standard wealth by the standard wealth. จากคนที่ตื่นตีสามสี่สิบห้าทุกวันเพื่อคุณนะครับขอบคุณมากครับพี่วิทย์ครับสวัสดีสองท่านมากนะครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ